So it's, uh, it's a quarter after nine, and we should have, I'm going to 11, but uh, we'll have a five minute break somewhere in the middle, like around uh, 10 o'clock. Why? 
it increases the likelihood. But also it increases the likelihood that we will have more energy. The basic reason for that is because then get, our energy gets less blocked off by the pictures of the nafs. And I'll explain what I mean by that later on. So these two areas, engaging in effort, our primary effort, is to open up the channel between us and love between us and God. And our secondary form of effort is we, as we, that channel becomes opened, we are better able to make wiser decisions in the world and to pursue, uh, we have greater energy, increase the likelihood we'll have greater energy to do what wisdom is directing us to do. And the, and the basic reason why those two go hand in hand is that the nafs, the self that compels us to at the lowest level, that compels us to do evil or to, to perceive things in an evil, negative, self-destructive, and sometimes a way that's destructive to others, the power of this nafs, which rests on conditional love, which rests on us fulfilling what it imagines, what, what the nafs has been conditioned to believe will lead us to fulfillment, all of that belief structure becomes undercut when you access the unconditional, ongoing mercy that is at the core of who you are but which we have lost access to, for the most part. We've choked ourselves off from that because we bought into the belief structure of our commanding, compelling self, which works to, it worked to get us this far in our life, but barely. Many of us are kind of hanging in by a, hanging on by a thread. We get a drop, a few drops of this mercy, but uh, we want, we deserve more than just what the nafs, what the commanding, compelling self, what our egos have led us to. And so the more we access this unconditional mercy that lies at our core, this then uh, weakens the pictures, the belief structures of the nafs, the conditioning of the nafs. And so we're able to see outside the box of the nafs, outside possibilities beyond what are genetic programming, what our early childhood conditioning have trained us to believe we could, uh, we needed. So that's kind of the overall structure of what I'm going to be talking about, linking it up to some essential teachings in the Quran and the Wadifa, in particular the way the Wadifa the door the Wadifa opens up is that over and over again through the Wadifa, the door of who we are is opened up very clearly to us. And who are we? We see, he was talking last night about the perfection. We are all of the divine qualities. We are the mirror of all of the divine qualities. We are made in the image of God, a statement which we find both in the Hebrew Bible as well as in the Hadith of Muhammad. We are made in the image of God. So the whole point of the Wadifa, like in the daily weird, when 
we say, Allahumma salli, O oh Allah, salli, which the translation, we translate as send blessings, but when we just go into this, we discover, as he says in his commentary, we discover that send blessings upon the Prophet means far more than what the English would lead us to believe it means. To send blessings upon the Prophet literally actually means establish a felt connection. Establish a felt connection between me and not only the historical Prophet, but with the Mohammedan reality, which is this all-inclusive, primordial nature that all of us have in common in which we mirror all of the divine qualities. All of that's who we are. Maybe you heard this before, but you might have forgotten it from time to time. You think you are you, but you're much more than you. You are just the surface of who you are. The you that you normally think you are is the surface, just one, one iota, one, one small fragment. The we that we normally think we are is just one small fragment of who we really are, which is this amazing rainbow, this crown studded with all of the jewels of the divine qualities through which everything of existence comes into being. It's not just hippies that like rainbows. We are rainbows. We are all rainbows beneath the surface. But we've choked off the rainbow part of our existence. We had to scrap that's the right word, to, to scrap, to fight, to survive. We ran away from fear. We, like, aggressively tried to hold on to some goal and pursue some goal. Or we tried to get rid of fear as hard as we could. But unfortunately, beginning with whenever it was that our genetic programming was really kicked in 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 years ago, we were programmed to choke out that unconditional mercy. It didn't lead to our survival. We had to run away from those weird people coming over the next rise or we had to fight them or die. And it was important to do that, but we, we choked, we held on to our self too much. And then that, of course, was compounded by whatever conditioning that we received when we were young, built upon that earlier genetic conditioning. 